what you're seeing right now is uh, basically let's say this is 2010 and uh, when we get into hard surface 2 we look at 2020 this is the beginning and what we used was uh, masking group topology okay and then uh, we used the brush masking plus deformation to help us organize it so again the system here is predicated upon organize model sculpt model all right and the reason why I want to bring this up is because this has one very big uh, uh, flaw <laughs> in the workflow Okay, we're artists, not engineers. We don't organize. This whole workflow is built upon the idea, groups, loops, is built upon the idea that you organize your model with these poly groups and this craftsman-like approach, and then you sculpt it and adjust it. Okay, that's what Maya does. So ZBrush kind of deviated slightly, and they knew it, you know, or they didn't know it, but they figured it out pretty quick, and they're like, ah, oh, groups, loops wasn't that feature we need to rethink it and that is when uh, panel loops was delivered to us all right so I think that should really uh, call it a day for us we did cover everything in the list and the most important thing in uh, everything that I've presented to you guys is is that you get the sense of evolution of the features why they were built uh, and then how they have been modified as well as a sense of the workflow so if you've got questions now is the time to shout it out and while you're writing them um, I am going to be uh, I'm gonna kinda summarize a few things so uh, let me pull up my list So we looked at transpose, okay, and we covered things like the foundations, the fundamentals. We covered measurements, and that's that's the that's the most measurements we're going to cover in transpose. Uh, we will cover real-world coordinates on importing and exporting and displacement maps. Uh, we covered masking, posing. I'm going to treat that as a line item. Uh, we took a look at uh, mesh extraction and most specifically we took a look at mesh extractions in terms of its as a uh, as like for gears so planes uh, let's say gears we'll leave it at that then we walked into shadow box and quickly walked back out uh, and then let me see where is this and then we went into groups loops okay and this takes us to uh, ZBrush 3.5 so I've got a ton of stuff on this so you'll look for it it's going to be in the older version of, Z of ZBrush but I got a ton of stuff of this that I'll make available as like a bonus module uh, for you and this way you see how it's presented and then if you're teaching classes uh, you'll be able to kind of use those uh, demonstrations as uh, your demonstrations and um, kind of hit the talking points, uh, so to speak. Okay, let me look at your questions now. Uh, homework, all right, let's talk about that in a second. Um, in the original syllabus. Okay, Roberta, the shoe, uh, the atelier and shoe access, uh, basically I'm moving everything that you need into your course. So I probably shouldn't have even mentioned the atelier, uh, but it has actually moved over to the hub anyways. Uh, but what I do is move everything that's relevant into your course so that you actually get the downloads. Uh, that's if downloads are available at the time that you're hearing this. <laughs> that is under consideration. Um, maintaining crisp corners so glad you asked that 
and uh, go from there. Okay, and then Jim. All right, so let's talk about maintaining crisp corners, and then we'll talk about homework. So one way you maintain crisp, number one, you don't maintain crisp corners. L let's get zen about it. The way to maintain hard corners is to not maintain hard corners. So first step, you're not going to. Second step, put them back in. AccuCurve, uh, turn this auto masking off, and then you can kind of get those back. This is the best route I have seen for this. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to divide this and then you have to use H polish. Now, H polish is going to use this group. So you can come in really low. And try to use H polish to kind of get you some clean edges. And you'll have some success or not. But ultimately, the hard edges and the issue of hard edges is really what drove future innovation in the panel loops. Because you can see, one of the problems I have is if I go in and I start to sculpt this, then all these parts are connected. So what if you separate those parts? Well, now you can do a lot more, and separating your parts is what panel loops does. Does that answer your question, uh, Corbin? Okay, and Jim, uh, I wanted to show you guys this because you may or may not have noticed it, but uh, the new DynaMesh is supposed to keep your polygroups. So it did not keep my edge loops, but it did keep my poly groups. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's really kind of crazy awesome, to be honest with you. Uh, but it, there's more than that, because it also works with partial visibility. Um, let's say, out of that, I'm going to remove subdivision levels. And uh, let's do the lower subdivision level. Okay. And let's say I want to uh, DynaMesh these feet, this part. I'm going to say DynaMesh that, and there you go. You can do partial mesh DynaMeshing, which is really amazing. Okay. So I just wanted to show you guys that to make sure. Um, Ryan, Booleans are, yeah, definitely remeshing, and uh, it's definitely later. Um, and Daniel is mentioning that you could crease the edges. Yeah, definitely an option. So we can look at that. And uh, Jeff is asking the difference between H polish and trim dynamic. Okay, so the difference between H polish and trim dynamic is uh, is really this one preserve edge feature. Let me get my cursor back here. Samples preserve edge. That's the key difference. Otherwise, they are different in terms of their algorithms, but the clay and polish algorithm are very similar. So preserve edge is the difference. And it probably has a different depth. And it has depth masking. Okay. All right, homework. What do you guys want to be doing? The key thing that we needed to explain was transpose and posing. And we needed to explain um, the basics of hard surface. So, the way that you do that, and you demonstrate that you're, you're learning those things, is one, pose your model or demo soldier. Okay, that's your model or demo soldier. doesn't really matter. What's really important is that you get a sense of how to pose these things. And I recommend that you also check out Transpose Master. Now, I didn't cover that because at this point, you, Transpose Master is something you should be able to jump into. If not, make sure you jump into one of our uh, Hangouts or you email, or I'll make sure there's some tutorial up there for you on that. Um, but it is really, really simple for multiple subtools. Okay. 
So posing. And what I would really like to see from you guys is some sort of prop, some sort of hard surface prop. Uh, and that means that you can do a gun. I think I have a Smith & Wesson, um, I forget what the number is. But anyways, I have a, a gun tutorial that you'll have. And uh, you can do that, or you can do the shoe. The key thing is that you, <coughs> excuse me, is that you're using shadow box. Let me just write these down. Shadow box, polish. You're using subtools. Okay, and you're using um, edge loops and groups loops to some extent. Gr it's not 100% important for you to use groups loops. You have seen enough of it and its limitations, so I'm not going to force that upon you. Uh, gun or shoe. Does that answer your question? Okay, and uh, email support. Your your answer. I always do that. Uh, support at zb zbrushworkshops.com or uh, the mentor. I'm not going to put it in video. Uh, right now, but you can see on the class page you'll see Nate's, in this case Nate's um, email address. And uh, and then later, we're going to have a team of mentors that Nate's going to be managing and uh, lots of people. We're going to certify the world together. You guys can come and mentor and uh, and certify people with me. Great. Alright guys, Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope this was useful to you. And um, remember, we are going to be getting into the pol uh, the uh, panel loops and all that stuff uh, soon. And uh, this is your very firm grounding in it. Now you'll understand why. What's that groups loops thingy? What? Why they do that? Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Paul, Jim, Steve, Andrew, Kathleen, Johannes, Vincent, Roberta, Kathleen, Ryan. I love your name, Ryan Darling. It's like your parents could never get upset at you. Ryan Darling, Darling. <laughs> All right, guys, take care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon, and we'll get this up as soon as we can. See ya.